Okay. Hopefully I... Oh, wait. I just... Hopefully I'm on the right channel here. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to Okay. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Where did you just come from? That took you so long. I went to the mall. I was getting some stuff. Oh. I'm hanging out with some people at the same time. Don't lie. You were getting bitches, weren't you? I mean, I was <laughs> no friends. <laughs> He'll say that. But yeah, I, like, I, I'd be telling people, like, everyone's always like, oh, man, uh, collab with Afro, collab with all these people. And I'm just not a collab person because as you've experienced, like, it's just like especially with both of us like we're just so busy all the time so like trying to like coordinate some shit is a pain in the ass like it's one thing yeah. if it's just like me or jay or like you or rhyme where it's just like it's it's easier but and so i figure a podcast is better especially since you were in that podcast that was god you know i think that was like two years ago when you were on no. the podcast last time but yeah oh, but yeah, like one, yeah. wait what i thought you're talking about like a, a podcast with a keg or some shit but yeah yeah that was a long time ago holy shit yeah, I remember I was like playing Watch Dogs two or some shit. No, not even was it two? I don't know. It must have been two, or whatever. But yeah, but Watch Dogs, um, you never played that game. Don't slander yourself. No, I played it. I played like a torrent version of it for like five minutes. <laughs> I never, you know, you know, how I am. I don't, I don't finish games. But you don't, you don't play games. Stop. Yeah, but like I mean, so for like for, for me, like a collab would be weird because like if I if I'm if I'm like recording a video, like my version of collab is like I'm streaming for three hours and like. Some of my friends from the Discord, like Jay or some other people, would just be in there. We'll be playing like Overwatch or some shit. Like if I if I just I mean I'm sure I could figure it out, but like if I could just record for like 30 minutes and then make a video, it just like it, it wouldn't be as good to me because it's like not enough material. So I get you. That's I mean, how I feel about it. That, that is smart. Okay, so I think now everybody is in here in the stream and whatnot. So so for the, so you guys in the stream, Afro was supposed to be here last week, but. He uh, was like, oh, I have this Alienware thing. And then at first, at first that hurt my feelings because I was like, okay, this nigga's ditching me for extraterrestrials. But then I saw the video and then I was just like, okay, I would have left my wife for that. So I, I perfectly understand. <laughs> so yeah, they, did they, they, give, they give that to you, like that whole thing? or No, no, no. So they made it look like that, which was pretty cool. I mean, I fucked with that. But it was like a, like a Kardashian type of aesthetic. They airbnb a random place and oh. I went there and um, they put their mobile their mobile studio thing there and then i just went in there and did whatever the fuck i wanted um i have an option between whether i want to uh make a video or stream and i really just want to text out test the mixer so i wanted to so stream that day pretty fucking awesome personally it felt like a, a black kardashian but like, yeah i admit i was watching that video something. and i was envious i'm just like listen I, okay, all right, listen, so, so you, you may not be able to say this, because uh, you're like, well, not be able to, that wouldn't put it that way, but I'm saying, none of y'all niggas get no fucking Alienware, build your own PC, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but listen, but listen, but then if, I, if, if I'm gonna get airbnb into a move-in fortress gaming setup, then, oh, Alienware, oh, let me tell you how you need to get this Alienware real quick. Now, see, I, I know why you would say, build your own, build your own PC, because, you know, the shit you hear from Alienware, it, it's, it's pretty uh, questionable in regards to longevity with the computer. But I'm telling you, it's, it's an i9 processor. All right. Oh, this oh, is what I'm oh, the plug. I'm i9, 1080 Ti, I think. 64 RAM. I don't care what brand it is, bro. I'll give my pinky toe for that bitch if you say you're going to give me that for free. Don't, don't <laughs> no oh, yeah. See, you're giving it out for free. Oh, sh listen. Okay. <clears throat> Dust off my shoulders real quick. I'm good with that. Uh, but. <laughs> No, nah, but I definitely agree. Like building your own computer is like something you should experience if you have the option. Like don't ever buy pre-built as your first computer just because like you kind of want to know what's happening if something breaks, you know, you want to. Well, okay. I will say like, shit. and I mean, I don't know. Like, it depends. Cause like, I would say like, if you have like a, like an, if you're getting like an Alienware laptop, then yeah. Cause like, that's a laptop. Like you can't build a laptop. I mean, well, I ain't about to build a laptop, but for like I bought a pre-built PC, but like I feel like just get one that you can like make like adjustments to. Cause like I bought my PC pre-built, but then once I like looked at it, it was like, oh, these are how these Lego pieces go together. Then I switched out everything, and now yeah. my PC is like a completely different beast of what it was before. But so well, I, I made like, some yeah, improvements to that. When you have a pre-built one and you learn what you're doing after the fact, I never did that before, so I wouldn't know. Um, I guess you can learn that way too. But for me, like I built my first computer and like when you build one computer, whether it be like a test, whatever, you know what to do for the next computer and so on. So I don't know. For me, I, 
I always get worried about like if a processor breaks or like little tiny things. And like I feel like the whole knowledge is so fucking key. But yeah, like like you said, like you can learn it vice versa. So that works too. Yeah, I mean like for me, like now like when I took it all the way apart and put it back together, I was like, oh I can't believe I did that. But um at the beginning I wasn't about to do none of that shit. So yeah, so I'm sitting here looking at the comments and everything. So like I need to address you guys in the stream here. I actually, it almost hurts my feelings sometimes when like I'll be leaving like troll comments on your videos and then people will come in, heavily stop hating on Afro, get the fuck out of this channel. I'm like, whoa, 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 <laughs> we, we are homies. What are you talking about? Like, so, like it, it, just, to, just to give some, some back history. So, and actually I don't even really fully remember. Um, like, so even before I, you were on that podcast with me and Jay last time, I do remember like, um, I remember actually the first, I don't know if you remember this, the first time that I tried to do a collab with you was like for Storm 4 or something, and like I fucked Yo, up the Mark. audio. Do you remember that? And yeah, then, yep, yep. and I was just like, oh, it's ruined. And this was before either of us had any subs. I remember when I first found your channel, it was like like before Storm 4 came out, and I think, I think you still have more subs than me, but you had like, I think like 15K subs or something, and then I was at like 10K or something. And I was just I like, oh, oh, okay, another black guy playing weave shit. All right, we can relate to that and shit. And I started watching your videos. And um, I actually remember, they're probably, I don't know, they're probably either so far down we can't see them or enlisted. But I remember you had like a specific series, like a Naruto, like Revolution series or something that I thought was really entertaining. And that was mm -hmm. the, the series that I, I liked and shit. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then, so I feel like this is something obvious, but then as I've learned as a YouTuber is that most people is like, especially later down, they just don't know. So like, um, I, I remember, so then Storm 4 came out and I, I see this was before I didn't know better. I just made, I made like, I think I made like one Storm video and you made like, what the, like you made like a hundred videos on Storm 4 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like they got all these views and shit. And, um, and then, yeah, and then you got to, I think at that point, then you got to up to like 300,000 subscribers and I'm sitting here like, wow, well, I ain't shit. Like, <laughs> so, so I remember what, what? that happening. And then at that point, uh, like I was just, I was just like, okay, well, if Afro can get away with just, uh, spamming, um, anime, uh, gaming videos and people, so, cause that, and that, that's the, the whole thing is that I would say, okay, if you make video, if a bunch of people make videos on like one thing, then all people are only going to want to watch videos on that one thing. And then once that game dies, your channel dies along with it, which is the case to an extent. Like that happens with people all the time. Like I'm seeing all these channels get like, I saw this one channel that was at like 50,000 subscribers when I subscribed like three months ago and they're at 500,000 subscribers now, like wow. that quickly. They have like millions of views per video. I'm like, oh wow. Okay. But then at the same time, when Fortnite dies, like will people still be watching that guy's channel or whatever? But, um, and so, okay, my, my, here, here's, here's one thing I'm wondering. When you, so when you started getting all those views for Storm 4, were you like overwhelmed by that? Or were you just like, oh yeah, I ain't shit. Okay, this is, this was a, like, cause I'm pretty, cause you didn't upload like consistently before that. So. Yeah, that was like just, just me doing what I love. Cause I love Storm. Like, that was what I made my channel off of. Um, yeah. When it started happening, I'm just like, oh shit, dope. You know, like I didn't know what to think. So I just turned my brain off and just kept on doing it. And you know, just kept on like going up and up and up. It was crazy. Like it was, it was really cool. But, you know, like, I was more upset by the fact I didn't have spectator mode and I had to keep on doing ranked and getting mad and shit. Oh, but my God. I, I don't even it. remind I me. Enjoyed, like, into the team. <laughs> like, I think for Storm 4, I played, like, I don't, you can't see your hours on Storm 4, but I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure I clocked in, like, 800 plus hours just off of gameplay alone that I, some of it I didn't even use. Um, just a lot. Like, I'll just go on there, just leave my shit on and just play. And that shit was just fucking great. Like, that was the, the golden age for me because, you know, Storm was my fucking shit. And then now we got Shinobi Striker fast-forwarding to the, the future. I Which is um, going to be trash. I'm just going to say that, so. I mean, the thing is. So um, your videos you be confusing stuff. because I feel like you don't ever want to flame nothing. Like, you want to be nice about it. So you're just like, Shinobi well, nah, Striker, nah, you like, know? I'm, I'm very real. I'm very real. The thing about me is I love hype shit. So in the beginning, I'm just like, okay, this looks shit. Uh, agreeably so because it was in... Uh, like fucking raw footage and um, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just like, this just looks bad, you know? So when we see the actual full trailer, I'm just like, mm, whatever, it still looks all right. Then we had the like official trailer with like a bunch of new shit. Um, they presented it really well. And I'm just like, yo, this game is fucking awesome. After I said this game is shit, mind you, right? But um, that's just the title. In the videos itself, I explain like my full opinion. But, yeah. you know, people don't really see that. So they see the title. It's just like, bitch, you said you hated the shit, but now you love the shit? Like, nigga, like, what, what you want? But, you know, like... I was I getting like comments like that, too. Like, it's, it's funny. Yeah. You either have to 100% hate something or 100% love it. Like, you can't have pros or cons or it's like, oh, you flip-flopping. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, that's that's how it is. I mean, I, I don't know. Personally, right now, I there's a lot of stuff I can't talk about, right, in any form or fashion. But I will say, I I'm not even hope like there's a lot of stuff to be hopeful about. That's like behind the scenes with the game, I guess, like possibilities perspective. Yeah. But right now with what we have, just like with everybody else, I I on the same wave of you guys. Like I think the game is is some shit. I ranted about the shit several times. My, my last one being my definite rant. But like I don't know, bro. It it, it saddens my heart. Like. Well, okay. Yeah. Let me rephrase because what I played, I wouldn't say is shit, but it's like the amount that there well, is you, to play, no, as like, opposed you, to. You played you played land too though. Like which time are you talking about? Um. Well, yeah, and that's the other thing, too. Like, when I played at that Bandai event in San Francisco, and we had everybody who was there, we could actually talk to them and coordinate, the game was really fun. And then, yeah. now, granted, this was one map, one game mode, but when you're trying to play, like, I didn't even, I don't know about you, I didn't even get into that beta at all. Like, I was in the beta, but, like, I was, like, I wasn't, like, some people, I don't have the patience for hours to try to get a game, but I was for, like, a good 30 minutes, like, flip, jumping through servers, trying to get into a game, and it just, like, it wouldn't load me in a single game. I couldn't play it, period for the yeah. um the open beta the closed beta i was able to play it but um for the open beta I, it, I, it was just unplayable period and i think they actually sent out some email like oh we're gonna try to have another one come out later and but that's the thing is like the game like i feel like what the game has is fun but like for that to be everything and for it to be online only and i don't know how much but i'm assuming it's gonna be full priced i'm just like well for what they've shown us so far it does not look like a game that i would want to spend money on but yeah i don't know 100 no, percent. like the thing is you played the game the attended way was supposed to be made. So I guess you, it makes sense. Like, I honestly wish I went to that same event so I could do that too, because I feel like there is like some light with what we have right now. Um, but you know, they didn't give that to us in the beta. So we're forced to play it in the way that wasn't necessarily intended. Like I don't have a friend to play with. I got a bunch of random nigga one, twos and threes and yeah. myself, and I can't even talk to him. I got the automated little messages that don't mean shit. And I'm just talking to myself because sometimes he talks about me saying shit. Let me talk that, but yes. I don't know. Naruto for me, like it's it. That's like my fucking pride and joy, bro. Like I don't think I would even have the energy to want to be a a big YouTuber if it wasn't for Naruto. Like that's what started everything for me, and that's what I'm really passionate about. You know. So when I see shit Naruto games like presented, like not the game itself, but when I see like the game treated in like a shit way like it's like i'm getting a dagger like they're drying me with every yeah i mean it's like because i want these games to do because like you said like for me like the dragon ball and naruto games like we have another solid dragon ball game we had xenoverse and they transition on right now we're in this overlap period with xenoverse and fighters but with like the storm games and like even though like i guess it's just because the game's been out but like the storm games were like people will complain about the storm games but the storm game the storm series was a solid series and i got a lot of mileage out of that just like you did and so now i'm trying to find my next storm game i got all this naruto clickbait waiting in my file explorer to be used in thumbnails and i just have nothing to use it for and it's hurting my feelings i need yeah. i need more <laughs> and um uh oh yeah it's like and here's here's another thing that i've always wondered is like so for me like for my main thing for storm because i was like okay well everyone's playing these games same with fighters too everybody's playing these games so i i can't compete by just making the same ranked matches whatever so for me i would just like i was like okay well what i'm really good at doing videos on that nobody else really covers that often except for maybe like kagi or something is like mods and like i i remember like like have like i think it was either storm or universe was one of those two like showing you how to install mods on one thing so like you've done mods for both games but like you don't really ever like it doesn't seem like you use mods that often like is it just like something that's just like too complicated for you or what well with with how i do mods how i like to do it which is how i enjoy to is like do it versing other people right i don't like yeah. showing off the mod by itself I've, I've done that before but i'm not generally having a good time like I guess I am when I'm recording it because anything I record, like like when I'm playing the game for a purpose, I have fun like every time. But when I I stop recording and I have to edit it, like I just feel the fatigue coming through because I just think to myself like, oh fuck, like this isn't really fun for me to watch. And you know, uh, I just try to keep on making shit I like to watch. And with that, I only do mod stuff with um when I verse people. And when you do that, you come into these issues where some mods aren't compatible with others at the mm -hmm. same time using certain moves. And so, like, that kind of burnt me out of doing mods. Uh, guys, especially with um, Storm, yeah. It's a pain in the ass having to troubleshoot yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, Storm, Storm's, like, uh, like 
bar, like, you know, like how Xenoverse has like the, the super characters that were never released. That was like that bar they reached. In Storm, it was like all this overpowered shit. Throwing with guns, like, with <laughs> oh my God, it got so ridiculous where like moves were taking up the whole fucking yeah, screen. Yeah. Like, and like the more ridiculous <laughs> it got, the more impossible it got for like um, mod videos. I think there was one time specifically, I'll never fucking forget this. It was Kabuki and I were doing a mod video for Naruto Storm 4. We, I woke up at 5 a.m. my time and we got finished with everything at 12 p.m. my time. Like, mm -hmm. just all the issues we had with every single mod we had, it crashed our game entirely. We had to reinstall this shit. And it was that session where I, I stopped fucking doing all that. But <laughs> I, 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 I low key went back and watched some old videos. I don't know if you do that too. Oh God, I, I I sometimes I do, but that's that shit is cringe. Like I, it's it's funny too because I make a video like three months ago and I look back at it now, I'm just like what the fuck. Like <laughs> yeah yeah no, I, I definitely feel that. I 100% feel that. Um, sometimes I just look at like the videos that um do like really well, so I can kind of study from it, you know, kind of see like what did that. Yeah. Um, and I've been doing that with a lot of my mod videos, and I honestly fucking miss it. So I might try it one more time, uh, kick a dead body real quick for my own pleasure. But yeah, uh, you know, we'll corpses. See, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, that's one thing. I I I do I do do that a lot though, where I'm like like I feel like I spend hours like not watching, just scrolling through my videos and looking at how they performed and looking at all this shit and going through. Like I, it's funny because like the videos that I actually make, I don't really watch those types of videos that often, I, unless it's like for research or some shit. Like I I watch your videos a lot, um, but because I, I feel like like there's they're they're entertaining not necessarily for what you're playing but just like just it's more for you rather than whatever you're playing i don't lots and i don't give a fuck like naruto ninja five whatever the fuck but right. for the most part i don't really watch a lot because a lot of these other and that's one of the things why i like um your channel and my channel is because i feel like even though we're making videos on this stuff like there's like uh, like a face behind it whereas like like thank god now rhyme style uses his face because i remember before he did it but like a lot of these channels there's like kabuki for example like there's no face like and a lot of times there's not even any commentary and it's just like uploading whatever content or whatever so like that that's that's mainly why i don't really like those types of videos so so much like i'd be like i was telling people this i was like man i, I speak you spending hours watching asmr videos shit like <laughs> right. man i don't know why i like those so much like i like do you watch like those like anime type no. gaming oh, videos at all i thought you meant asmr you oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey well in that no. case you need to you need to hey man you need to watch some asmr dude Bro, you need to watch some of this I, uh i remember there was one time where you know I, I met this asmr girl who was like a really cool person and i was talking to her like a lot was, like on some homie shit and like she was trying to get me in to that whole thing and like at first i kind of got the pleasure like not the pleasure but like i saw a type of of entertainment value from it when I'm trying to hit them Z buttons, you know what I'm saying? Them Zs. <laughs> um, but that was about it, you know? And there was like one ASMR video that fucked me up where it was like this bitch who who made this simul like this th this sound of eating a brain or some shit. Like Ugh. if you I'm, some I'm of this sorry, shit is just the noises this. are fucking weird. They're fucking disgusting. Like they're yeah, like, like like that ear eating shit's like ugh. Mm hmm Yo, everybody, even you too, like on your own free time, type in brain eating ASMR. Oh god. Yourself, all right? <laughs> Those fucking noises, bro. They gave me they gave me this wasn't even nightmares, dog. Like when I was on the toilet, I'm hearing the sound <laughs> in places I shouldn't be hearing it. That shit, that shit disturbed uh, uh, me. Holy oh fuck. Jesus Christ. I feel like that I'm scared now. I feel like that'll give me some PTSD type shit. I'll never hear certain sounds again the same from that. Yo, like dead ass too. And like it's like an eerie silence. Like the shit's so quiet. Oh, like, I expect like Satan to come on my ear or some jarring shit like hey, what's going on, nigga? nigga? And I'm just not <laughs> ready for that person. That's just me. But I don't what know. The fuck? I'm a Anime channels, I, I do fuck with those, like a lot of anime people, because for me, I'm with YouTube, I really oh fucking love, I love the people who do YouTube, like, so yeah. like every time, big or small, like there's a new person who does some shit and I see them put work into it, I, I, I fucking watch, like, okay, we're not getting this, what are we talking shit. about? <laughs> um, we're talking about how um, good, ASMR oh, can shit. be really fucking weird with some of its noises. Yo, I thought I thought Heavenly did like a weird loop with his voice. So like, nigga, you gotta. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. He's not that talented. He's not that talented. <laughs> Relax. What's going on, my boy? How you doing? Yo, what's good, dog? I'm, I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was in the other room. I was talking to my mom's, and she was ordering some food, and I told her. Nah, anything. you got it, dog. I just gave you a virtual forehead kiss, bro. Good looking. Oh, hey, 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 watch out, watch out. That don't belong to you, bro. Get keep your mouth to yourself. Right, anyway, nigga, that's kind of gay. What you mean it don't belong to me, nigga? You don't want to <laughs> nah. You can rent it, but it doesn't belong to you. What, what more do you want me to say? I'm confused. All yeah. right. Uh, so what are we talking about? I heard something about YouTube and. Um, Afro is about to start an ASMR channel. Um. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, man. Yo. I can imagine like heat just like whispering in my ear and shit. But, like. But I have, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> 
<clears throat> what are you thinking of this of this like recent YouTube climate and like trying to trying to create an account like right now? Like, oh yeah, I want to make an ASMR channel and all this other shit, and because of all these hey, requirements and shit. ASMR ASMR gets fucking views. So if you were oh really my god, like insane YouTube for like viewership, ASMR is like the silent version of a AMV, bro, on YouTube. <laughs> one ASMR of some and like that watch time though that watch time yeah and those videos are long as shit too so oh, man. yeah it's, you just turn yeah, it on and, you and some of them videos I'd be watching multiple times so the thing about ASMR like editing is very strict like you need a certain type of mic like the mic I have is yeah it's pretty nice it's a nice mic but it's not an ASMR mic it won't do that what kind thing. of mic do you have I have a uh, Fucking big uh, dick, Mike. I gotta go look at the name if I'm gonna be honest. But it looked like a, a robotic it looks, dick. It so looks like it one of the dick. sure, one of the sure condenser mm. microphones. I, I mean, all mics look like robotic dicks. Let's be real. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm an audiophile, so I used to, I, I pay attention to that a lot of that. Yeah, Jay out here building mics and shit. So yeah, my my first two mics I had. Building a mic. What the fuck? Yeah, built myself. Yeah. Uh, oh, my meta is that build a PC, Actually, dog. Got a mic. <laughs> right. It's funny. My mics, uh, both of the mics that I have, uh, the two labs, the the two condensers, and then I have one dynamic mic, and then I also built the cables for them too. So I like I made those when I was in college. So, but see, your mics be complicated because sometimes like you don't even be knowing like your set your 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 computer be just switching audio inputs out of the blue. Like I'm not trying yeah, to deal with all reason, that. Yeah, for some reason it does that because it's like it's trying to prioritize USB over over like. Yeah, I like on mine. I just plug like it into a nice. USB port and then it turns on. Like I'm good with that. Nah, so nah, I'm good. Mine mine comes with a whole fucking setup like with a mixer attached and everything. It's just like nah, it's just it's just too much work, man. So it, it gets a little. It gets a little wild, but I mean, from from time to time, I mean, I'm not a big ass YouTuber, so nobody really cares. It doesn't matter if my audio is shit or not. So. <laughs> I've been using the Yeti ever since, like, however long ago. Remember the fucking snowball? Do people still use snowballs? <laughs> oh yeah, people, people still do. I mean, oh honestly, my god, if you, if you have sound foam, a, a snowball ain't that bad. You got shit to like, kind of compliment. It's not bad. I just didn't like that thing that would just be falling all over the place and rolling everywhere. That's a kickstand, right? Yeah, but that kickstand would just be given away. Um, like you just nudge it and it just like. I don't know about all that. That's that sounds uh that sounds a little strange. I don't, I don't well, know. I don't have it now. I have the scissor stand, so I don't have to worry about that shit anymore. Anyway, so yeah, they, hey, thanks for the super chat, Steve Dodge. I'd be watching his uh, Xenoverse hey, and Fighters videos because I'm trash. Man. Fuck y'all, can't stand them. Anyway, oh yeah, oh that's what we that's what we need to do. God, we need to. I, I need to. I need to collab with you on Fighters Afro. I need to see how good you are. I need to see if I can kick your ass. Oh, I'm still I'm still training actually. I've been only playing in training mode with fighters. So let me feel confident and anybody can catch the fucking hand. Okay, everybody. <laughs> but like, you know, I got you. I know, that's why we tell people too. I'm just like, listen, I, let me just wake in the shouting out real quick. I, let me just go into training. Like, I I can get like that's why I was uh, would be saying to people like um I, I don't really like unless I'm making a video, I don't really be playing the game like that. But if I really sit down and practice, like even the amount that I've like, like, and I've never even played a fight, like, owned a fighting game before. So even the little amount that I've done, so yeah, shut up, Arrow. Even the little amount that I've done, I've, uh, like, I, I've, I've learned a lot from like the like, I don't know, twenty hours I've even put into the game, even trying to like learn it. So, and th that's this that that's with no prior experience. So I figure, you know, just a little bit more practice, and then, yeah, it'll be whatever. Okay. Like, <laughs> I'm good. And then, but then even so, even if you're like really trash at the game. Like you can still get away with beating some people who are way better than you if you just auto combo and just spam ults though I've noticed <laughs> so <laughs> it depends. You got to do what you got to do. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Just trying to live my best life, bro. I remember. I, I remember when I was at um oh, Anime bro, Expo. Did you live your best life. I, yeah. Wait, what? Yes, what? Bro. What's happening? I, I I heard like Jay made a cultured uh, cultured reference and I I just spam. First of all, oh, yeah. I need you to understand. First of all, er, let's hit the brakes. I run a show called Canon Culture, my nigga. I am I am like. So versed in shit that it's like when I come to podcasts like this and all he wants to talk about is anime, I'd be getting pissed off. I have to bro, real I quick, do. real quick, chant that was Chance's song, bro. Bro, like, <laughs> it's, it's so funny because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Chance, and I wasn't like I was hearing the song on the radio, and that's how I knew. It's already on the radio. Yeah, it's already shit. on the radio, fam. Oh yeah, that's the Cardi B song. Yeah, that's I thought, how I knew. I thought... it was like Chance taking off. Bro, I thought I thought Money Bags was gonna be on the radio before anything, cause that was like the thought anthem. Money back, money back, money back. I can already. Oh like, god, the that's the strip club like, anthem. Though. That's the strip club. The anthem, the party right? anthems always be on the radio, just so because they're so repetitive. Like exactly, and yeah. It's interesting because my homegirl, she works at a, she's a, a hostess at a, at a strip club, and she was telling me that that was the first song like they were listening to that last month, and I'm like, what? Like, in the strip club? And she was just like, yeah, you know, we we don't even 
we, we just don't even fuck around with it, man. Like, as soon as that song come on, it's just dollars all over the place. Man, that make for a great excuse to be at the strip club. Be like, listen, I wasn't trying to look at no strippers. I was trying to get that sneak peek of the Cardi B song. Listen, yeah, no, that's where a lot of, actually, in, in the hip-hop industry, that's where a lot of stuff gets, like, tested out is in the strip club. Because if it bangs in the strip club, it'll probably bang on the radio. And people will probably listen to it. So that's that's just a good testing ground. And plus, if strippers love the song, they about to play that song the fuck out. Like you, it's just it's not. <laughs> so the strippers are over here, slightly in the in the background, marionetting the hip hop industry. Like okay, the strippers like yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> the secret you know, manipulators like, behind the scenes. <laughs> I mean, you know what? If you're if you're a stripper and you got a go to song and you're you're popular, you know what I mean? Like niggas come to the club specifically to see you because you be doing the split handstands on the ceiling upside down on a magic carpet. Like uh, of course motherfuckers are gonna come see you so you have to have that signature song and that thing is just going to ring in people's heads forever so even if you got some dudes out there who are just and I, i'm not saying dudes are the only ones to go to the strip club because like in in my group of friends we we go to the strip club too and it's like it's it's three girls and three guys so we we go to the strip club from time to time and that was the first time we heard the song was in the strip club so i'm like man that song bang is that chance the rapper like the fuck like what is he doing <laughs> What is he doing on a track with Cardi B? I, I don't understand. Like, yeah, that, that shit threw me off, bro. I haven't. Made yeah, a bunch of people were like I surprised that Cardi B was on a ch song with Chance. But like, I remember him like tweeting out like when she put out her um when she was gonna put out her album like that he was like a fan of hers or whatever. But I don't know. I think maybe yeah. because he's really lyrical and she's like guy like people don't really see her as a legitimate rapper. Like, oh, you just have a ghostwriter and you're on love and hip hop and shit. Like, they don't take yeah. her seriously. I'm so like, I feel like really Chance really being on her song validated her a little bit for people who didn't really see her that way. Every oh no, that was mainly a come up for for a chance thing, thing uh, Cardi because really you would think so. Well, yeah, in, in that it's... song, on Cardi's verse was trash. Like, <laughs> literally took that song. Don't do that, bro. <laughs> bro, literally, Cardi B is a ratchet hype rooster, dog. Literally, oh, that's what God. she's good for. She's good. Oh, for see, me, out. me, me, and Jay are Cardi B fans, so we take we take that we take that nah, personal. Bro, the only, the only <laughs> bar she's good at, the only bar she's good at is whole bars. That's literally her talent. Oh like the, the fucking shit she says when she when she's being like to that extent of like nasty is the only bars that she can produce. That's just that's what I think personally. But those are the best bars though. Yeah, I appreciate I like whole bars. Song. I can't remember what it was. Uh, the one she made about uh, the Migo. By the way, what would you call it's Super? Okay, yeah, well, no, okay. I haven't really, honestly, been listening to her music lately because, like, whenever she's I, like I, Offset, I'm like, okay, I'm good. I don't need to hear any of this. Like, to be honest, I, like, I will. I will agree with you that the thought bars are the best bars. Uh, because first of all, let me tell you how on repeat I be all the time all uh, all of my friends will tell you one of my favorite go-to lyrics is ride the dick like a BMX I love that fucking line, bro. Is, <laughs> oh my god by far, like, all right, but bro, like her but bro. Verse on motorsport was uh, was was hype. All right, so now I can't I'm gonna, even I'm gonna ask you though like do you quote her shit when it's going on like you quote That's what I'm no, saying like <laughs> no, actually actually Heavenly will tell you this. I'll just be randomly in the Discord and I'll just be playing like Rainbow Six Siege and I will just sh shoot out just Cardi bars for no reason. But like this is a J. Oh, like, okay, but this is a this is a J thing though. Like, like okay, like J. Everybody, every straight male can't get away with throwing out whole bars off, off the cuff like that. You have to understand. Like, like, in, in my squad Discord, I'll let you know there is a lot of gay like Tom <laughs> going on. Like my homies like fucking sexually assault me, so I have no choice but to fight back. But it's not gay if I'm using it as a counter, right? But if you're seeing some whole bars that are made for, like, not niggas, that's a strike, dog. That's a ticket. Wow. You can't be saying ride a dick like a BMX <laughs> or, like, First of all, or, like, whatever else she says, bro. Like, I'm going to tell that. you, I was streaming Rainbow Six Siege the other day. My my go-to thing is it's litty like a titty. That's the first thing I got to say. And then when I'm literally killing a man, that's right. I ride the dick like a BMX. Oh, my, nigga, what's my God. Right, what's bro. Good? Uh, nah, your real nigga nah. DLC just got confiscated. <laughs> so. Check this out. Check this out. It was base game anyway. It wasn't DLC, fam. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, that validates okay. it. Okay. Right, well. I have absolutely no problem singing any Cardi B lyrics whatsoever. It does not matter what it is. It doesn't matter if she's choking on a chicken, bro. Nah. If, it, if, the, if the lyric bangs, it bangs. Dog. I'm just saying. Dog. Oof. I don't even know how to respond to that. I know all of all of my, of course, you know me. Like Cardi B is my is my spirit animal, fam. So anytime you... Bodak Yellow comes on, if if any of my homies are in the car and you're not singing it along with me, you got to get out. You might. Like, be I, honestly, hell, I was liking her songs that hey, she was putting out what? before that. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm glad I got my seat reserved. They could all be right, going down like, there with his tongue out with like banging yeah, Cardi B. I, oh my goodness. I, I'm at fitness, bitch. Satan, what's good, nigga? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, down, I'm, down I'm with it. I'm with it. Hashtag no bring back to old Jay. Hashtag that nigga never left, bro. 
<laughs> what is you saying? Yo, the, the fucking dangers of when you get a nigga social link to ten, bro. Like you hate, you hate to see it, bro. Like I'm learning too much. Like what the fuck? Nah, nah. like I used to, I used to sing a lot of. Uh, there was a lot of Khaleesi lyrics I used to like uh, back in the day. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, this one bitch was talking about oh Trina lyrics. I also bang with some Trina lyrics. Not anymore because I can't remember anything. Cause wow, you like all the female rappers, rappers don't you, Jay? Actually, I I love female rappers. Like female rappers are probably some of my favorite people to represent, just because like they're just not out there like that. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like females in comedy too. Like you got some bitches that are out there all nasty and like yeah, this is the way I suck dick. This that and the other thing. Then you'll have some other girls who are like. A little bit more wholesome in their comedy and stuff like that. And those are the ones I like. It's it's like uh, when you compare Tiffany Haddish compared to what's the white girl's name? Um, oh, Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer. Oh yeah, God, I, I don't know how I, that must be why people think. I don't know how people find her funny. Like I just I think no. Amy Schumer is is okay. I don't think she's she's like funny. She's literally like trashy white girl funny. Like and that's that's not something that appeals to me. But Tiffany but it's like Haddish, it's all like, all, her, all her jokes is like that easy shit. Like you're not gonna get thrown yeah, any curveballs. Uh, like it's always just like oh okay. Exactly. So. So like I I respect her as a comedian. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's great. If you're funny, you're funny. I may not personally think you're funny or whatever, but I mean, you're you're not you're not gonna account to like being better than somebody like Tiffany. It's Hatch. hard to talk shit about progress, like 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 uh like um progress, like like pro oh, see, that's like, um, a whole different conversation. results, you know, like yeah, I mean, like if if, if you're making that money, then it's like well, clearly somebody likes this shit, so I can't exactly. really say much about yeah, it. Yeah, like. yeah, that's like that's like every time Charlemagne says, yeah, I don't think Amy Schumer is funny, and it's just like. 64 million people may think she is funny because you know she's selling out yeah like i like, like you said you may not think her like, funny but like, i will acknowledge the hustle but like like that's how i'd be like with a lot of youtubers i'm just like you make trash videos but you get those views and you get that adsense so you keep doing what you're bro, doing i'm not i, I respect the grind charlemagne on like oh my god me too like i just like I it, people that. be hating on him but it's just like he's just like, keeps it real like Y'all niggas fake fans, get out of here. You ain't even buy What? It. What are you talking about? I ain't gonna buy no niggas book, bro. That's just a money nah, move. Nah, Yo, like, I don't read, nigga. I don't book. buy no one's book. I don't buy my I wouldn't buy my own book. Like Nah, you can get the audio version. Stop playing. Yeah, I ain't gonna buy a book unless a nigga named manga, bro. Fuck out of here. I can't man, I can barely even get myself to listen to podcasts anymore. Okay, so check this out. On the first on the first the first and the last page of, of his book, he has like the pictures. Guy who, no, 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 it's not. Oh, see, you lost me. That bitch ain't for me. That's it is. No, saying. no, no. It is pictures, but they are they are character illustrations of like, um, it's him, I think Andrew Schultz, and like it's like comic panels, and they're like fully colored, and it's made by uh, the original uh, illustrator for Black Panther. I have a riddle me like, this. Riddle me this. Left to right or right to left. <laughs> oh, bro, there's no text panel, so I can't tell. There's no text panel. So oh, this is what we doing, huh? This is what yeah. we doing, huh? Hey, listen, bro. I just because I present the information doesn't mean uh, I'm the one who set it up that way. I'm sorry. I wish oh. I would have, because then I, I tell you it's right to left. So well, listen, you know, when Charlemagne publishes his first Black Panther manga, I'll be the first to buy it. I'll let you know. Bro, right? I, I, I don't, I don't believe in buying anybody's fucking book. Like, if I made most of the time, it's like I they didn't even write the book. Like they know. had someone help them. Like yeah, like how like, would you know you didn't buy the book? Nah, no, bro. but I don't need to know that. Just I don't need to read to know that. Like that's just something that's just a me, thing. Let me let me just tell you from a nigga who has read about the first ninety four pages because I've been so fucking busy. I just haven't been able to pick it up and put it back down and stuff. Uh, I've had it since it came out, and I've been reading it periodically here and there. It's a great fucking book. There are some really good stories in there. There's some really funny shit in there, and it's also some really good life lessons. Like one of the things that that kind of hit me was like after my recent breakup. And this was this was like a a very interesting page that I just happened to pick out and read. It was that uh, sometimes being unapologetic unapologetically yourself is the best things that you can do for other people. And I was just like, and it was like something else to that effect. And I was just like so distraught and like thinking that oh shit, like I can be myself all the fucking time without having to worry about what the fuck somebody else is thinking because I'm too busy getting this money, bro. But yeah, I mean, the, oh. I, the, I've already feel like I get that impression from Charmaine. Like, I almost feel like reading his books for people who don't already, like, watch all of his stuff and know all these right. things. Like, it's almost just, but like, regurgitating also, the information and condensing it down. Of, like, there's also the aspect of, like, because you guys know, uh, well, I, I don't know how much how much Afro dabbles in my content, which is probably none. I do but, watch uh, <laughs> Get out of here. I do fucking watch your content, <laughs> bitch. No, you'd be surprised. I, I, Afro, I, I, be, I, I, Afro be Afro watching your, shit, like. How was your fucking play, Prince? What? Yeah, shut your bitch that, ass that's up. That's how I know you lying because I was casted as the king, my nigga. No, you said you said that you're casted as the prince or some shit, and it was changed was, or some shit a, like that. That was a Twitter video. It doesn't count. 
Nigga, fuck wow. you, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyways, so what I was doing, I, <laughs> I remember watching thing. you when you went There's to your a... fucking boy's house and you're like editing or some shit. I remember little details, but I liked your layout and I told I, you that before. I, pre I appreciate that. Thank you. But uh, that it's changed since then, by the way. It's 2018, fam. You're uh, right. So, so. <laughs> So there's there's like small little nuanced stories in there that somebody like in the entertainment industry, somebody like me that, that would appreciate that because he was saying about like, uh, cause you guys know, I, well, heavily knows, I used to be on the radio a long time ago. And so he was telling me uh, in this book, essentially that his first five radio gigs were just all like fuck shit situations where it mm -hmm. was like white people trying to fuck him over. And then, and then he finally like got two breakout shows and then he was on the Wendy Williams show and like, the amount of things that he, he also tells his rape story in there. That was very interesting uh, because I didn't know that about him. And he really? like he said rarely that talks about it. You know, he like rarely goes into into depth. About well, yeah, maybe not like details. Yeah. Yeah. This shit was like explicit details where I was like, my nigga, you are a victim. Like this, <laughs> this woman sets you the fuck up. Like, holy shit. Like y you can kind of see a little bit more like as i'm reading it i'm kind of getting I, I feel like i know him at this point like before it was just like oh yeah i know of him now it feels like i i actually legitimately know him like if i ran into him i'd be able to have a conversation with him that wasn't about some bullshit like like oh i love your content blah 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 like i would legitimately ask him a bunch of fucking questions but like yeah but i mean I, like I I, I I i i feel like i get that stuff from him like i remember like yeah. like i mean like you're talking about how like he was on these all these different radio stuff and like these shitty jobs and getting fired and stuff and like how he had to like essentially grind like that's that's where i got that sort of like motivation and we talk about this on the podcast all the time me and jay how are like you know uh, as a like anything like youtube whatever you're trying to do like you just got to grind and like basically make no progress for the longest time before you see any level of progression I, so like i feel like too with charlemagne like he did he he had like gone through some shit as everybody does to get to where you are right yeah but charlemagne is really good with talking to the point where i feel like if you buy that nigga's book you're getting gamed up on a story because i feel like this nigga can hello over a hype a story without you realizing it like just how he chooses to explain it who knows yeah. what's true or what's not that nigga is really good at talking so my thing I want to get that good. I want to get that good. I feel like that's. I, that's I, I agree. I agree. I would also love to get that good because he is really fucking. Yeah. Really see, bad. us YouTubers got to edit down our shit to make it slick, but he just be doing that without any editing or unraw and cut. So. He, nah. He 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 scripts his shit like a lot. So. Oh, you think? I so? mean, but like he no, he does because I remember watching him a lot on Donkey of the Days and some interviews. Uh -huh. And like it's on the computer, like laptop he has. Oh, yeah, okay. he, watch it. He, he, he talks about that in, in the book and how like he he'll it's basically he writes himself a, an article for himself. Yeah, and essentially. And then he just mm -hmm. he he rereads it. Like, well, then he's really good at reading it like, then, because you know, like sometimes it's actually cringy. Well, like I'll be yeah, watching he like. Wrote it. Well, I mean, but still, like, I'll be watching, like, these, like, YouTube videos where someone will do, like, a review of, like, a game or something, and they'll, like, be, like, I don't know, reading a teleprompter or whatever, where they're, like, they're speaking it to you, but, like, it's, like, the, like just the moment they open your mouth, you just, you can tell that it's something written down, and I can't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm brought out of it well, after some, that. Well, I can't do that. People, I can't listen to it anymore. I have more experience with, with doing that because of yep. their, like, backgrounds and stuff like that. I mean, you would be surprised. I, I feel I, like some people who should have experience with that don't, like, I mean, I've done, I don't do it often, but sometimes I've done that in my videos where I just took something that i wrote down and i just conversationalized it you know like, i mean hey man I, I i used to do it all the time and i just wasn't yeah. i just wasn't feeling it you, only because i felt like i could do a better job just making up shit off the top of my head like as <laughs> yeah I'm i mean so i was like sometimes i'll still lose like bullet points to kind of just guide me through and keep everything concise so i'm not just rambling for like a long ass time or whatever but oh hell no no nah, bro that's 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 the whole theme of our podcast is uh is nothing is uh nothing is in order so. with, with charlemagne too there's some things i can tell he's really passionate about so like with Donkey of the Day specifically, there's sometimes where you'll give a Donkey of the Day specifically because it's a clout move, and when he does that, you can you can hear the rating, right? But there's some situations where he's passionate about the where you then feel the passion behind what he wrote because it's not a clout move, it's what he legitimately thinks, you know? And I feel like some niggas really perform best when they, you know, shit talk somebody or when they go at somebody. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, that sounds like my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds like me. And see, and I, I have, I have like a lot of the philosophies of like, like the Af um, and that Charlemagne has, where he says like, you know, if he like if he's talking shit about somebody, with, and talking shit, I think is a weird way of phrasing. It's really what he's doing. He's just giving his opinion. He's just giving criticism. Like that, like, like. 
people will be t people take criticism personally like all the time but just like these are these are my critiques it doesn't like like your content like your art whatever it may be and you as a person are two separate things like then it's like it's like they're not attacking your character they're just giving their opinion and it's like if like if, if, if you're if he thinks you're a trash rapper is he not saying you're a trash person like because i'd be saying all the time like Most oh of the you know. time those things correlate though no i mean they Charlamagne do sometimes and you can easily tell the way they'll respond too like like yeah, uh Char charlamagne meter burns when he calls you a trash rapper like he doesn't call you trash he calls you trash with level three assist you know what i'm saying and that assist yeah. is his vocabulary so like like i remember people that saying that he was like um uh that he was flip-flopping when he was like uh saying like good things about drake at some point but it's just like i was never a drake hater i was just like his stuff was trash i said it was trash like yeah. it wasn't like they didn't like him as a person or anything like Bro, yeah. like, on a super side note, a cultured sh uh, side note, I don't know how many of you niggas know who Chanel West Coast is. Yeah, that was just, that was what I was I, thinking of, actually. I like, love seeing him. She is a perfect apart, example. Bro. Like, I and you know what, you know what's, you know what's horrible? There was this episode of Ridiculousness where, like, he just said, he just said something random, and she just so went off out of nowhere. Yeah, she got tilted, bro. Yeah. yeah. First of all, Chanel West Coast has always been a trash human being in general, because I remember when I used to watch her on fucking fantasy factory and this bitch would be bitching about everything literally like the amount of like editing they would have to do to make this chick seem like she's a normal person is just fucking ridiculous <laughs> shit, the, the shit out of her mouth she she definitely says nigga in her own home but she says she says it with a hard r bro i definitely believe that I, I also believe that i also believe that but i don't yeah, she, I think she, 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 she says it with the hatred though nah, she, she just says it like just, just because ah, he he ha ha like i can i i yeah. should I, she she's uh, she's Iggy Azalea before there was before Iggy was like, <laughs> bro because... I don't care bro Chanel's my favorite rapper dog oh my god <laughs> like like she's I so can't. bad at entertaining bro I I fucking listened to her like her EP thing whatever the fuck I don't know if that was an album it was something it was probably an EP then yeah, yeah and I'm just like bro this shit's so bad it's good an album, it's an EP, like... yeah so her her I, and Lil Xan bro like those are my two bad rappers. Like Lil Xan, I don't like listening to. But every now and again, when I want to hear what the Illuminati sounds like, I go peep it real quick. Yeah, like if I want to hear some it. like some hyped up screaming, I go to X. I just go like Tentacion and just hear some of this <laughs> nonsense. I'm just like, yeah, okay. Some some of his tracks are really good though. Like, yeah, like, actually, like he like at first when I like from the outside looking in, I was like, oh, this is just guy making a bunch of noise. But like sometimes it's like, oh, this guy is an actual artist. Like. I, was I, I feel like X's new sound is just not for me, but that's just me. I mean, I, I can feel that. I can feel that. There's a lot of stuff that uh, just some some new artists put out, and like, because after uh, the Takeshi Six Nine interview, like, I didn't know who that guy was. I I didn't realize. I didn't know he was. Uh, yeah, I was like, who's these nigga with skittles for artist? teeth? I don't know. Yeah, who this yeah, is. I, didn't, I, I just thought he was just some hype nigga on on Instagram, you know, like like a uh, whoa Vicky. Like I I just thought he was. Just yeah, because I mean he's just lo like like so colorful. Another I'm just like, what is this a clown? Yeah, like what? I, I don't. It was just an, another popping Instagram person who just like it was a joke or something, like some boot yeah. some boot gang shit or something. That's what I thought it bro, was. Bro, that that dude six nine's name's the death note, bro. It's just a matter of time. That nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like that nigga uh, hit too many what? beehives, bro. Like he has yeah. to be on guard every second. Like that's crazy. Because like the thing is. If you're popping and you decide to like hit a, a, a nigga beehive by like the hood or some shit or some gang, they will never forget because your death or doing anything to you is a clout move that they're just waiting to get. Oh, yeah, they're I know. waiting to snatch your chain. They're waiting to catch you lacking. So they can like brag First about all, it, bro. Hood, hood niggas enjoy doing that shit just to just to normal niggas that live around the same area. Because I used to when I used to live in Compton, there was a uh, we were like. Where I was like living at was in between what what was called like it was like this Mexican gang it was like the one five fives and and uh, the the swamps is what it was called, and like I've had my fair share of like dealing with like hood nigga shit because I used to do a whole bunch of shit that I'm not gonna discuss on this podcast. But <laughs> there was a uh, there was always always just this huge ass beef of like anytime somebody would say something, anytime that nigga like fell down some stairs or wasn't capable of tying his shoes, that was a move for the hood, bro. So the fact that this guy is going around like like he definitely checks in. I, I don't. I I don't care what he says like i i think he checks in when he comes to la because that's that's some shit like you run up to the wrong place bro that's it it's over Forget no he, he he doesn't I, check I, in I to the niggas who said him. check in because yeah. he, he's just he's a scary like you know so like that's what that's what i'm saying like dude dead ass is on a time clock because he's just doing some wild shit oh uh, fun fact not a fact actually but um i used to live in the hood too my brother also did too i have like two brothers one of them uh, he's a high my other one's just like hood as fuck um, he, he's oh like a goodness. popular rapper in his block. Like, I don't know um, too many of you guys, like, 
I don't think a lot of you guys who are watching lived in the fucking hood before. So how like some block hood rappers work, it's like they are really popping if they if they are popping in that specific block, but they're only popping in that block. Like they the, the people in that area keep them there and they don't really want to go anywhere else. Like that's how Yeah, and like they, they it's almost it's like work. it's a self-inflicted sort of self-containment. Like it's like they yeah, want it that way. Like it, it's self con that and like some complacency on the rapper's part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was definitely. Fine with that. He was he was fine with being like popping in the hood. But the thing about popping it, like, if you're a rapper like that in the hood, from what he taught me, this shit I only knew from what he was telling me, is that niggas will try to press you to see if you really about what you rap about. So you're always going to get tested so niggas know if they really can vibe with the, your music and or you. So the thing about my brother was my brother was really into, like, smoking and shit. And with doing that, he learned, he met a lot of people that, you know, are of the other spectrum of the hood to where... Mm -hmm. You could get fucked up if that dude was in your house, depending on what that dude did, right? Pull up on your moms, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull up ass. on your moms, talking about, oh, what's this, what's what's good? Whoop de whoop he about this life, mm -hmm. this that, and the other thing. And it's like, oh shit. Yeah. So, so long story short, my brother was fucking with a dude who sold some shit that wasn't okay in that area. Like him himself didn't have a good name. My brother didn't know that, but when they saw him fucking with with him they assumed that he was part of what he was with, you know? So after that, it fucked up his reputation. And every time he would do like his little music things and kind of like walk around the hood promoting his shit and doing what he did, people would press him. So on some movie shit, when he was driving, somebody coordinated um, getting his car in a certain spot so they could hit him, they hit him with their car on the side. Fucked up everybody in that car. My brother almost died. He Damn. was in rehabilitation because he had to walk again because he broke his... uh. Femur, I think the most painful bone to break. Holy and shit! A lot of other shit. Um, the car was totaled. Uh, they robbed his his laptop with all of his shit, and he was he was just he was fucked up, you know. Um, and unfortunately, my brother's schizophrenic, right? Um, that's a long story in its own. But like with doing music, he was able to kind of control the the mindset you get when you're not on medication and when you are and shit within music. When he lost that. He kind of just, you know, lost everything, you know? He kind of just went crazy from it, which is a side note. But he was telling me all that shit. It was just like, damn, bro, like, you really got to, like, if you're in the hood doing the hood shit and, like, you you fuck up your image with how you hang out or how you disrespect somebody, like, you got to be careful because once that shit's fucked up, like, like you said, like, people, anything they do to you is a W. And how they do it, it I guess it's different every time. But, you know, you never know how it's going to come to you. And it, it, it's just crazy. It, it really is. See, when I, I don't know why people want to do that to themselves, painting the so. target on their back like that, but whatever. I guess it's yeah. their own. Hey, man, listen. You got to do what you got to do to get this club sometime. Mm -hmm. so, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of stories of my own, but you know what I'm I've saying? Been, I, don't you know, know you got some dudes out My here. parents still live there. I go back there. I ain't going to say shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to visit. Bye. <laughs> that's yeah, it. Yeah, like that's I'll, literally I'll, it. Not going to be here too long. I parked down the street. <laughs> like, uh, in, yeah. And wait, what city is this in Afro? San Bernardino. Same. Oh, so you? Oh, you always oh, been living way there, down there. You was out there with the vatos. Oh, the, shit. yeah, the vatos. <laughs> oh no, bro. Oh no, my homegirl. She lives. She lives in in San Bernardino, right? And so I was visiting her a couple of weeks ago. I was like, "Can I park in your garage?" And she goes, "Why? Like, what? You don't want to park on the street?" I was like, "Bitch, your next door neighbor has three pit bulls out and with the gate <laughs> open. Like, like, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm nah nah. I just drove past this. Can I please just park in your driveway? Like." She was like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see why not. And um, so sure enough, I pull up, I'm getting out of the car, but tell me why, as soon as I, I like close my door and lock my car, I see niggas at next door looking out the window at me and I'm just like, oh my God, yep. we're going to yep. make this a short 20 minute visit. I'm going to say hi. I'm going to say, you know, hi, bye. Let's go get something to eat. I'm, I'm driving. Okay. Like I, I'm not leaving my car here. That. Like San Bernardino, you wouldn't expect it to be that way. Like it's just... San Bernardino, they are hella big on stealing cars and rims and shit. Um, oh man! With, with getting murdered, it's about like knowing where you are. Like, like for one, if you hit a beehive or you, or you're, if your name's out there, because it's any like damn near shit, the, it's you're, like you're... damn near the desert. It's like desert adjacent. Like niggas. Yeah, yeah, San Bernardino is in that inland area. Like I have a cousin who lives out there, yeah. who lives, used to live out there, so I would go out there yeah. a lot sometimes. But bro, like I remember. There were times because like I didn't have a car for a while. Like when I used to live out there, it was straight struggle, dog. And like I would like run to GameStop, uh, which was like a few miles away. It was in Rialto, which is the next city over. Then come back. And there was one day in specific where I forgot to go down like the desert-ish area shortcut to my house, which is dangerous as fuck in hindsight because I could have got killed and buried right then and there. 
But um, I, I walked to the projects one time by accident. So I was just like, you know, in my own head. And um, when I was in the, like, the one thing about the projects there is they are the projects. And you do not want to cross those because you got the, the Hunter x Hunter niggas on the porch. Oh, my goodness. Fuck you up and take what you got. And, and bro, <laughs> that was the first time. I you got, got the Phantom home. Troop just waiting. Yeah, yeah, nah, and like they they're fucking grimy as fuck too. Like they'll they'll shoot you. <laughs> they they throw knives, which is crazy as fuck. Like they'll chase you with a knife and throw the shit. So you gotta wow. like peek your shoulder every time. This on um, some great Ninja War type shit now. Okay, it, it is, bro. That's like it's survival of the fittest with them. Like you have anything on you, they're gonna be petty as fuck. And like if you give them what they ask for, you're fine. But they're gonna try to ask for something like you never walk to the project. Oh, also, what you guys need to know, like, and I, my, 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 my parents are always tell me this too, like, like, uh, don't be like, oh shit, I'm just not gonna have nothing on me. No, you want something on you because if you, if, if there's nothing for them to take, they taking you shit. Yep. And, and another and thing too, be, which was and, like, and it's 2018, they taking booties now too. You gotta be careful, bro. <laughs> I don't that. I no, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead ass serious. Because, uh, there was, there was a, I mean, there was came a here looking mind. for boys. I came here looking for man's butt. There are, there was a homie of mine who was, this was back in the MySpace days, okay? We were, keep in mind, we were in fucking middle school, dude. And this was when I had moved from, from uh, fucking Long Beach to Inglewood with, with my dad. And like, I thought I was the hard shit. Cause you know, I was like involved with this gang, that gang, this, this shit. And, like, I thought I was the hard shit in comparison to like some of these other niggas out here. Cause I used to like beef with like Mansfield, Crip, and, like all these other niggas. And I'm like, okay, as long as I, as long as I keep this up, like, I'm cool. Like, I'm just going to get in a fight every day. It's a scrap every day. No problem. So one of the homies I had, he, they couldn't get to me because, like, as soon as school is over, I'm out, bro. I'm dipping. I'm going back to the, I'm going back to the set. I don't need to, I don't need to hang around after school. Nah, I'm good. So niggas can catch me slipping. I'm good. So my homie met with this girl and they were talking over MySpace for like a good three months or whatever. And so it was so bad that she invited him over to his house they like did school or whatever and as soon as he got to her place there were there was like six niggas there and they told him to run his pockets and he was like i don't i don't have anything i just have my like my wallet my lunch oh money, my whatever. goodness this nigga got his ass beat so fucking bad and they they like were like shoving shit in this man's asshole like they were just fucking this dude up like, like wow they raped this man and i'm like you mean to tell me that's some wild shit and after that i was just like all right i gotta move like <laughs> that was it that was it, dude. I, I mean, I, I never heard of that shit happening like myself, but like I would always go on like a world star and shit, and I would hear about it, like the stories or whatever. So, the the world is a fucking dark place, man. It is. It is. Fun. That's why you're gonna catch me in my room at night making YouTube videos, and then I'll go out in broad daylight. That's what's gonna be. <laughs> Bro, dead ass living in the hood made me like a recluse. Like I I got in the habit of just not going outside. That's how you that's become a famous YouTuber. That's it. I mean, yeah, that's all the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you want to be a famous YouTuber, that's the key. Move to the hood. Bro, the one thing I remember. <laughs> you ain't got no choice but to stay inside. Exactly. Yeah. I remember I was with my friend one time, and like the one thing that I never knew how to handle, I thought you're just dead if someone asks you this. If someone pulls up to you and they say, Where you're from? But this is a specific thing you're supposed to say, right? Um, because if someone's pulling up to you and saying where you're from in that area, they are from that set area, right? So. If like what I didn't realize I was walking with my homies in um, X, Y, and Z area that we're from, right? So the dude pulled up slowly. He was like, where you were from? Like normally when that happens, if you don't say shit or you run, they will shoot you. That's just how that goes. Oh yeah, that's it's, it. It's, it's, it's always a shoot. Yeah, that Never sounds about right. Else, they will shoot you. Um, my homie was just like, like he spoke up. He's like, yeah, we're from West Side, whatever the fuck. He said some other shit. And like, he was like, bet, uh, good shit, dog. Uh, stay away from here, bro. Y'all a little bit too deep. Uh, too many heads or some shit like that and i'm like yo bro like nigga we about to die he's like hey if we weren't from here yeah that would have been our life i'm like what the fuck and they told me like every time if anybody ever pulls up on you like that and you're not from there and you don't say the specific shit you're done you're like, like that's it and that shit like i don't know like that, that that's when it gets real like I, I never understood why a nigga would kill somebody because you're in the wrong area like that area did nothing for you bro like if you I go mean, to jail, your niggas ain't gonna be there for yeah, you. Yeah, essentially, and it, and it's so interesting too because it's only people like you're not gonna get some random rich guy to come through there and you gonna come up on some shit. Like that's not how that works. You are literally robbing other dirt poor niggas. Like like you are literally stealing from fucking. I, I don't know. I never understood the hood mentality after I got out of it, and that shit was just like not. 
Yeah, I've never been in that mentality, so I can't relate. So I can't begin to try to comprehend. Well, well, let me so. let me let me tell you. Let me let me just give you a story because, uh, <laughs> like you said, there's a there's another thing. When somebody pull, first of all, we're from California. When somebody tells you to pull up, that's either an invitation or a fucking threat. Okay, so when somebody tells you where you from, like I just want to know where you from, you just go, I don't bang. That's it. That's it. That's all you say. You don't say anything else. You be like, okay. I, I heard. Okay, now I don't know. This what you, is, what, you like, what you got in your pockets. You 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 tell me. You tell me what you know on this one. But I was told to say I don't bang is a 50-50. Like, you don't know what could happen to you if you say that. Nah, I know, because even if you know that phrase, then that's just like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, it it's depends like you, on the person. You know enough, yeah, you know enough to, to know that you... That you know you enough to know to say that, yeah. What if, what if I ask you, hey, 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 where are you from? Hey, man, I'm from down the street. Like, Oh, you're it, done. Like, you're dead. Yeah, you're <laughs> dead. That's how you know. You be like, I don't even know this nigga that's with me right now. Like, nope. I, mm -mm. Nah, man, I'm from... I, I don't bang. I don't bang, man. And it's like... The difference, the difference is, is probably your tone. I would have to say, like in in my experience that I've seen, is probably your tone. Like if you seem like you're not, like you're not about that life, and we're probably not gonna rob you, like probably. Like it's a very very small chance that you're not, that you're gonna get out of here without getting robbed. It's a very small chance, but I mean, still. It's, I uh, mean, just just it's, need to stay in the right areas. Like that's how I see it. Yep. Like, hey, man, I mean, and, and then and then and then honestly, like it's not like like. That's you, like it, like like people should really be freaked out because like honestly if you're like typically like most of these stories i'm sure is like you guys were younger like but typically especially if you're like grown like if you're in the wrong area you know like way ahead of time so like it's it's kind of like it's kind of your fault if you're in that situation oh, like what, what were you doing there's parts of there's parts of downtown la i'm not allowed to go to anymore just because of and but then also okay and then like especially down here in like uh like at the la district though I, I can say though that sometimes it, like but it's like you just especially nowadays where you just got like google maps and shit just know where you're going because like a lot of the times like you can just go from like you'd be like in this rich neighborhood and then you cross the street and suddenly it's the ghetto out of nowhere so that that is one yeah, thing yep yep that's how like, it is off of crunch and pico fam you cross yeah, the wrong so, street that's it you're done now that's definitely that's over. definitely possible oh you made a left at roscoe's nah fam you're done you're good. See, I don't know anything yeah. about Compton. I know, I know Compton's hard mode hood because, like, you could die if it's nothing. Not anymore, actually. Um, Compton has been like drastically changed over the years. Like, I, I, I still have family members who live in Compton, so I, I check in every now and then. Yeah. Over there. So, Ugh. and it's not, it's not what it used to be because Compton actually, like, back in the '60s used to no, in the '50s used to be all white people. In the '60s, '70s, and '80s, it was all black people. Now it's 90s, Hispanics. Early 2000s, yeah. Now it's all Hispanics. But now nobody lives there. Like, <laughs> there's there's literally abandoned homes because they're. It's yeah, you know I'd be seeing that too, like, like these abandoned buildings over there. Like, like when you get off the freeway of the 405, that, there's like these buildings that are just like un just all, they're just empty. It's all industrial over there, so it's yeah. not it's not residential anymore. Like you know, back in like 20 years ago, like it used to be. Wow, I'm saying 20 years ago because I'm fucking old. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know. I'd be feeling old sometimes when I'd be saying like I I'd be going into decade territory. That. It used to literally be nothing but like homes and like families and residential and stuff like that and of course you know you had your occasional riffraff or whatever but like in those communities everybody knew each other so the only niggas that was banging and that you had to worry about was if you weren't from there or if you seen somebody that you have never seen before because it's such a tight-knit community it's like okay who the fuck is that like at that point because even even like like the elders and the old heads and stuff even all you know like like my aunt like my great aunt we used to live with her and we used to live off of uh 155th in mckinley and no, not 155th, it was 157th. And there was a middle school right there. It's called Enterprise Middle School. I used to go to school right there. And like, that's when I like got into all, like, all of my hardcore, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm learning about the gang life and all this, that, and the other thing. And I'm hanging out on the streets and doing that and this other thing. And like, people was getting robbed, you know, one guy got, like all this other shit. So uh, essentially that whole area right there was just known as the swamps. So anytime we ever seen somebody who was either wearing the wrong colors or we never never seen them before, or we seen a car pull up that has never been in that area before, niggas get mad suspicious. And it's and and as such, because you never knew what somebody else did the day before to piss somebody off. <laughs> uh, you know, like the Paw Roos were like two blocks down the street. So there was just there was anytime you ever see a car with any red anything, you go in the house. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Especially over there, because it's all it's all like the hood colors was blue and green. So you didn't fuck around. Anytime you've seen any other color except for blue and green, that's it. You're done. Go in the house. Yeah. Man, I'd be forgetting how old you are, Jay. Just listen to it sometimes. <laughs> well, and it's interesting, too, because I met... Okay, so you know this new acting group I'm in or whatever. There's uh, there's this girl. Her name is Alexandra. And she's from... 
she's from here, but she's like lived in like NoHo. And so she'll tell me about like all these like places and stuff that she's been to. And for some odd reason, I don't know if it's some animus or Assassin's Creed type thing, but as she's describing it to me, I can picture it perfectly. Like and then I'll animus. describe it back to her. And she's like, oh, so you've been there. And I'm like, no, Goku. I've never been there. Chill, like, Goku. I, 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 <laughs> I legitimately think I've, I've lived a thousand years, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I have like memories that don't belong to me. I know I've been to places <laughs> that I've never been to. No, I shit you not, dude. And like, I've, I've just really like sat, sat back and like thought about it. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, the fuck is going on? So I think so, one of these days the Illuminati is gonna gonna come for me. That's why my um, that's why I always get a uh, oh Jay your channel's banging. Why aren't you getting subs? It's the Illuminati. That's what it is. It's a it's a deep conspiracy. That's what like it is. See, I can relate more. I can relate more to Afro stuff because um. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I know Jay got I, his I uh, Jay got his uh, ancestors' and memories inside of him. There's past lives, yeah. experiences, and shit. Like <laughs> I do that. So. Yeah, I legitimately think that. Like for real. So I mean, it's it's a, it's a plausible thing, but no, nah, man. Like I've lived all over all over LA. You know, I was born born and raised in Long Beach, grew up in Compton, uh, became an adult in Inglewood, and then moved to Hollywood and started getting this money, and then ran out of money, and then uh, needed to move back with my parents. So you know, it is what it is, man. You live a very 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 wild lifestyle when you meet. So you know, I'm a I'm a man of interesting culture. So you know. that's crazy. Actually, I think like, you're, Afro, you're aren't you younger than me? I'm 22. How old, how old oh yeah, okay. All right. I don't feel. I don't feel. Well, you, now nah, actually, that this? actually, actually, now I feel shittier because I don't got a beard and I'm trying to get one of those. Like, that's Yo, all genetics. I, I just think it's interesting, Jay, because you're, you're you're light skin. You have any chance to omnitrix into like the white <laughs> black? You know what's interesting though is uh, back when I used to go to school. I when I when I was in high school, I went to uh, the school called Fairfax High. It was literally off of Melrose and Fairfax. So I watched the birth of Supreme. Like I, I watched that shit. Like my classmates started that shit. And for me to be somebody who has the background I have, bro, I should have been took over the game. <laughs> Shut up, Lucid. Took it over. I'm just saying, yeah. like, it's it's some shit that because of the knowledge I have, I could have easily used and exploited that to like my benefit. So easily. But you know, sometimes you're young, you're stupid, you don't pay attention, you fuck around, and next thing you know, your homie is at two hundred and fifty thousand subs and you're still at two K. So, you know, shit, shit happens, bro. And then sometimes you'll, you'll pair up with homies thinking, oh, this is a good idea. You'll reach 10,000 subs in 2009 in early state of YouTube. And then one guy gets upset and deletes the channel. Man, Homie, I wish I, I started my it. channel back then. I'd be at like millions of subs by oh, now. Oh man, let me tell you. First of all, <laughs> first of all, this nigga, Adrian, if I ever catch him, he getting a fade on site. First I, I, I do believe it's not that simple though. Cause like with YouTube, if if you're if we're talking from the perspective of growth, I look at the shit like a fishing rod, and like you're just throwing out the ideas, and you might have yeah. some heat ass ideas, but if you don't got the structure right, they don't go anywhere. But I think so if you're you consistent, make... like the growth will eventually just catch up with you, you know. It, it does, saying. but like, but like, I, I look at it from two different perspective perspectives. Like, like yeah, you're fishing with the topics to get something back, but you also got to have the foundation, right? So like. Like when I mean foundation, like the house you're fishing from, that's what you're building up. Mm -hmm. Like, like your gimmick, like what you bring to the table. I feel like if you're out there using bait, like bait being, um, like topics that are deep or, or uh, vlogs or anything. Shit, that's not you. What? Well, just like, just yeah. like multiple no, things. Not, like not even that. Not even that. Shit, that's purely you, right? Yeah. If you do shit that's purely you, or doing like some philosophy, like like just some deep shit, or like some, uh, some some type of shit that you know people wouldn't normally watch if uh, i'm wording that wrong i feel like you, you you need to have like a pop in house like being your base like your foundation for your right base, right catch people, you know what i'm saying okay. like if it's gonna be some deep shit that's how i always look at it like if you're doing shit that has like a community for it you know what i'm saying like you're building your your base and foundation where a lot of other niggas build their base and foundation. That, that's why like, that's like why i keep telling jay something. like i keep telling him like you need to find like a fa like a community like a niche to exactly. build off a foundation exactly. on exactly. and then and then and then you have to transition into it being more about you than the content because mm -hmm. people don't know you like you may be a really dope person but like people who don't know you don't know that so you have to sort of bait them in with something that they're looking for and then they like then they get there and they're like oh this nigga is the shit okay i'm staying here but like you yeah, have to you have to throw I mean, out that relax, that lure you gotta relax on me man i got I, i'm literally working fucking you know eight out of eight out of seven days a week so you know i ain't got <laughs> I, I just started this new anime channel bro i'm about to bro let me let me just 
Let me just tell you, as soon as I fucking, fucking figure out my work schedule and how I'm supposed to do shit, I'm about to use that to, to the best of my ability. So, because yeah, like when I mean, when I first started my channel, like I was all over the place. I was making games, TV reviews, movie. I was just, I was doing all types of shit all over the place. And that was before Afro did his bullshit with his storm thing. And I was like, oh, that's what I need to do. I need to build a foundation off of a community first. And then that's when I, I started doing that. Like, <laughs> I remember um, uh, when I, uh, Actually, wow, yeah, that was two years ago, too. When I first met you after Anime Expo, and I was just like, um, and I don't remember how many subs I had then. I didn't have a lot. And I remember, like, I think that was, like, when you first, like, had, like, your biggest sub count or whatever. And um, and I remember you saying, you're like, oh, don't worry. You'll get there. You'll get there, too. And, uh, well, I, I guess I'm getting there. <laughs> was that was that when your channel was, was gone at the time? When we were talking um, about No, that was last year. That was last Anime oh, Expo. Okay, okay. This... Yeah. Did we hung out? I don't remember that shit, dog. What the fuck? Yeah, that was two years ago, bro. So that bro, that was not I, last anime last anime expo, but the one before that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, like I, I definitely cause I honestly like like I said before, like I really do like content creators growing. Like my mentality with YouTube is like we do the same shit. So there's no reason why we should like generally dislike each other. My my yeah. biggest peeve of, of YouTube though is like the personality, right? Like um like, I, I really dislike when people try to imitate, like, someone else when they could take the time to develop their foundation, you know? Because, like, I feel like the one that's the one thing always pisses me off. Because if one person tries to take something from someone else, it's like, if you're doing it in a, in a carbon copy-esque way, you're only living the shadow when you're going to get people calling you. Exactly, things. exactly. And, so, and, so and you ask, know you know from that firsthand experience how that looks like because when so people saw your channel me, grow, they try to just do that, just let me shadow your channel. Put the dashy mantle you, on me heavy. Go on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, oh, that's what I hate too. So when people try to you say you're copying line? someone else, like... So where do you but draw it's the like, line no. between taking something as, as like an influence compared to somebody just blatantly trying to copy? Like where... Like, hey, like if I know in in like like deep down like i'm not trying to copy this person but they were a very big influence on the way that i perform on a very big way that i i do things because there's like tons of actors and shit that i emulate all the fucking time and it's i wouldn't even say like when i'm on stage or when i'm performing or you know some of the comedians that i emulate people don't make the the co connection necessarily but every now and then i'll have somebody be like oh that was that was a chris rock type joke or that was a eddie murphy type joke or that was a that was a, a dave chappelle esque way to tell that story or something like well, well you got to you got to you got to homunculus it you know what i'm saying you got to fuse it but you got to fuse it to the right. point to where that influence that thing that you gained is a small percentage over your personality you're adding to it you know what so i'm now, saying so now so uh, now i i would have to say because of that my my follow up question to that is if you're if you're somebody who has found success emulating somebody, why should I should I necessarily feel bad about that? Should I stop doing it? It won't last. It won't last. Like it'll eventually get, like fizzle it's out. Like, like, it's like if, if your success is emulating and sometimes, somebody, sometimes who you use here, emulating to find to find your own flavor essentially. Yeah, and that that works. Like if you if you use if you if you're if it may it may seem like you're blatantly emulating as a base, but you have to be making an effort to like a bit, like to to edge out of that and like to try yeah. to add your own yourself to it as well. Cause like yeah. I remember when I first started my channel, that's how I felt like I was just sort of just taking ideas from other channels that I liked. But over time, you know, it's like it's unrecognizable from the people that I took um, inspiration from to begin with. So. Yeah, like like I, I was gonna say, like I thought it was cool watching you grow because you literally like figured out how to do you with inspiration of all kinds. Cause like you kind of told me that you watch other people to get like learn a lot of other things, and like mm -hmm. it, it does show. Like you're like like you you are definitely. Uh, very intelligent with how you title certain things depending on what pops for someone. Oh else. yeah, I definitely started blatantly copying your titles at one point. Like I remember, I remember doing that. Like uh, I remember that. But I was talking about mainly like like fucking um, uh, for instance, you did like a playthrough of mm -hmm. uh, fighters and you said the Easter egg shit throughout the whole. Oh thing. yeah, like stuff like that. Like that's just really smart. I remember that shit. That shit made me mad at first. I'm just like, yo. Stop! Because <laughs> for, for me, like I know. I was watching you, right? And like a lot of my homies were doing it too when I was blowing up a lot. And I was telling them, like, "Yo, I'm not doing anything special." Like, you know, for most of them, just like, "Yo, just stop." Because how I looked at it, it was just like, "Bro, like you doing this doesn't help you." Because if you grow under the shadow of me, you give you then give me the power to hurt your image if I were to ever talk. Not saying like I would do that, like like on Twitter or something, like in a like, mm -hmm. you're my son or some shit to anybody who would do that. But it's like, you don't want to give anybody that fucking power. You know what I'm saying? Like it's better to like build your name off of your image and take inspiration, but make that as like emo to like 
your overall like what you do you know what i'm saying yeah that, and i feel like with youtube if you're trying to be somebody who creates your own original content that's the best thing you can do because the one thing that lasts forever is your name so if mm -hmm. your name is having a strong influence of someone else that's connected to it it's like you're giving that power to the person you respect and the person that you respect isn't gonna respect you for doing that yeah like that's why i feel like um my that's like like people people were, were um like my a lot of my new subscribers because like i would say like the last like 10 to 15 episodes of Dragon Ball Super, like a lot of my videos are just me talking about Dragon Ball Super. And so now Dragon Ball Super is, is ending, people are saying, oh, your channel's gonna die with it with all these other Dragon Ball channels. You got all your subs from Dragon Ball Super. I'm like, what? I wasn't even talking about this anime for like 99% of its run. And and my channel's not gonna die from one other thing dying because my ch I've intentionally I've intentionally done that, like built my channel on myself and like my, my person. Of course, there's gonna be like, there's gonna be uh, peaks and valleys depending on what I'm making videos on, but you always have that base audience that will always stick around like that's what you want like you it's like i i was i used this comparison the other day about like it's almost like um uh it's almost like like getting a, a a fan base is like almost like mining for gold like you're gonna get like your little pan and you're gonna get a bunch of dirt and then you're gonna shimmy out all the dirt and then you'll catch the gold pieces so when you make a video you're trying to attract a lot of people to watch that video and you're not expecting them to all to subscribe but you're trying to get the people who get caught in that pile of people who got click baited in or whatever it is to then see what the content is and then they like the video and then they subscribe and then the rest that don't fuck with that they can go ahead and leave like i don't understand when people be leaving these comments be like oh man i was gonna subscribe to your channel so i saw this video so all right now but now i'm like i'm like okay bye like <laughs> i didn't i don't want you here like, i don't want everyone on the planet to subscribe to my channel i only want the real niggas to show up all the rest of you guys can go and move on to the next uh vlog channel whatever the fuck you watch like so yeah. you know what i i think it's very interesting because um well two things because that you saying that actually made me want to bring up this story um I actually, well, let me get this out of the way first. I actually used both of you guys to get this new job that I'm at. And it was what actually, I do? What the fuck? oh like... yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, <laughs> because because I've worked with um, my, uh, my last job, I was doing like, uh, you know, social media and like branding and all this other stuff. And so because I'm on so many fucking videos and because my name is, <laughs> is all over the place, like people j basically like look at my channel as like, oh, so you're just the cultured heavenly controller. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that, but okay. Uh, I, I get a lot of comparisons to like from me to him, but I don't see an issue with that. Like I have so far, I, I did it first because it, it kind of bothered me because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm my own brand. I'm my own name and this, that, and the other thing. But then I also noticed I'm a fucking comedian. Like that shit does not, any amount of clout is okay. And plus the average person thinks that having a hundred subscribers is a lot. So being compared to somebody with 250,000, that's, that's, that's fucking, that's cool. Now I say I use your name specifically because I've technically done videos with both of you. So the fact that I can use that on my resume and they're just like, oh wow, like you've worked with, with this guy who has half a million and you worked with this guy who has 250,000, you must clearly know something that we don't know. And so I'm like my new job, it went from, I worked for this, uh, it's not like a, I don't know how you describe it. It's like a, not like a junkyard company or anything like that. And they don't like collect shit that you don't want unless you actually just don't want it. But it's like Salvation Army, but for profit basically. So they were trying to get me to do their payroll specifically. Um, and then all of a sudden that somehow turned into, oh, you're gonna work on our Facebook. You're gonna work on our Instagram and this, that, and the other thing because they found my YouTube channel and just kept digging. So uh, really the point I'm trying to get to is I feel like both of you guys have gotten to a point where uh, as creators, you're no longer doing it because, um, well, I don't know what your, what your actual like motivation is for, but the motivation that I see is for the community of people that believe in you guys and the people, the community of people that want to be like you. So in that regard, going back to, you know, emulating, or are you, are you, are you imitating or are you copying somebody? Uh, I, I don't, I don't really see that as an issue anymore. I, I just, I just don't because you'll have people who do it for the culture and i talk about this on my show all the time is that you do it for one of three reasons you either do it for the cash so that way you can support yourself and like you know you can live your life and stuff like that you do it for the culture okay because that's that's important because that's for the people that come after you for the people that, that your peers for people that respect you and you do it for the clout because sometimes you do shit for free and you know you you intern or whatever or you know you may do all sorts of stuff that didn't necessarily benefit you but people respect you so and i feel like i, I feel like you two are, are good creator are good examples of creators that do that. 
Oh, that reminds me, Jay. Didn't you say there was something that you were gonna ask Afro that I told you I could answer for you, but you're like, oh, oh, I need to hear oh, it from no, someone it else's just, mouth it or was something. Just a series of like, because I was asking people on Twitter, we're like, oh, Afro Sinju is gonna be on the podcast. What do you guys want? What are some questions that you guys want to ask him? And it was one of the ones was like, you know, how to book brand deals. Like, are you searching for brand deals? Are people buying? You know, like searching for you and stuff like that. But then this head up his ass ass nigga thought it thought it was a question for him, and I was like, no, that's the whole <laughs> point of like, that's the whole point of having a guest is for somebody else's point of view. But I guess since you. Just just once again want to have your own head up your ass i mean no it. that's not what it was i thought you just had legitimate questions i'm like oh i can answer those no, questions because i go with that, that, stuff too. that i that i would probably just i wouldn't ask on a podcast at this point like i like i would want to like i would want to be on my like charlemagne type shit and ask all these pressing <laughs> questions but it's like you know and then even you kind of pointed out to me it's just like yeah well there's probably some stuff he's contractually obligated to not say and shit like that i'm like oh, that's nah, i don't think I, I, yeah and that's what i was saying i was like no nah, i don't think afro's like that like he'll say like oh yeah i can't speak on this specifically but i can say this and then give as much detail as possible because you know as as much as we would we would like to like have you know people believe oh yeah no i'm just an asshole this that and the other thing and i keep all this shit to myself i give all my secrets away for free because nobody <laughs> well, ever my, knows my thing knows. with with ad shit I only do things that I know I can make like really cool, you know. Or yeah, different. me too. That that's it. Like, I only find like and interesting. Like, I had so many like really expensive. There was one time I had a sixty thousand dollar ad deal to stream for a month on my phone. But oh god, I'm that, I I'm I'm doing one of those. I'm doing one of those too. Those are not. Don't don't do those. Like, yeah, like 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 literally, you're selling your soul and like money's cool. Six thousand dollars is fucking cool as shit. That's a lot. Like, don't get it twisted. No matter what, that's that's. Hey, a bro, that's student lot. loans, man. But, that's student loans. Yeah, bro. yeah. But like, I'm not trying to, you know, put all, use all the hard work I put in to sell my soul for a company for a month. And then streaming for a month. That sound. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. Like, like. They, um... they wanted like twenty four hours a week, um, oh, certain yeah. hours a day. Uh, like I couldn't play any music because copyright or anything like that just talking on my phone no games because copyright i'm just like dog like that, i think that's, that's, that's interesting cool because heavenly said the same something similar about you know some some brand that reached out to him or whatever and so deacon and i were talking about it and maybe because we're not on on like the the like large audience scale we don't know we don't know that that blight unfortunately but i think in the regards of like just sitting on your phone and talking i could do something like that for like yeah because okay well like so, and this i was trying to tell to like um jay and i was even telling this to my parents too and like it's hard to explain so based on what you just said you would understand but like someone would be like oh there are people are offering you this much money to do this oh well, i don't see why you wouldn't do it like it doesn't make any sense but like it's like and and, and now i can't it's kind of hard to like justify why i don't want to do some of those things but I, I don't know it just feels like i don't honestly like feel like i my channel is to make money i feel like that's just so that i don't have to do anything else but like i mainly just like if i if i can just get the bare minimum and then make this content then that's all i really care about because like the, the whenever i the only thing i spend my money on is like games to stream so i can make more videos on like it's all a circle jerk like i'm i'm not really trying to yeah. like like I, i'm like, just trying to be a youtuber cool. like all that money is cool but if it's not coming natural because like you know with if it interferes with doing, the with the with the, the the system like yeah essentially yeah like 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 then that defeats like, the I purpose didn't do this like for money i didn't mm -hmm. do this for money at all like you know when i did naruto that made this a job for me how it did i didn't expect it to do well i didn't care if it did well i just knew yeah. this was the last naruto game and this is what i wanted you know and with like that base that foundation i i just stay grounded to that and it's just like the money is cool but I don't want to tarnish who I am for it and just like sit there on a fucking phone and talk. That shit ain't cool. I can't edit. I can't do any of that. So, I mean, for me, that's just how it is. And I, I don't know, bro. It, it, it's just interesting. But that's why I feel like when people be saying that, like, oh, you know, some YouTubers are in it for the money. Like, no, no YouTubers are in it for the money because the, you get, before you actually, like, you know how much grinding you have to do before you even see a cent? So it has to be something that you're passionate about for you to actually make progress. Like, oh, yeah, you, so like, my first. My first year of just like consistently making videos before I made that first hundred dollars. Now, now it's just like uh, I, I'm, I don't make that on a consistent basis. I mean, I wish I, I did, but probably because uh, I don't upload as much. But uh, you know, when I did, you know, what's interesting is the way I see my channel developing ever since Canon Culture. Nobody wants to watch gaming videos on my channel anymore. It's just not a thing. But if I'm just sitting and talking, that's that's something that 
uh i find oh yeah i found that too like just like me having like conversations probably like they might not get the most views but they'll definitely get the most like comments and likes and interaction like those are the ones that people like the most just hearing me like talk about shit rather than just playing a game or live reacting to an anime or something and, uh, and the the reason why i think i think it's so not not just interesting but easy to a point where like yeah if you had to stream on your phone or whatever it's like just talk about like uh you know the anime that you're into or the videos that you're making you know like that's basically behind the scenes content that's what that is. So that, I don't know. Maybe it would have been easier for me to do, but I mean, nobody's offering offering me sixty thousand dollars to do anything. I, to be honest with you, like I, I contemplate. Actually, you know what? Bro, that's not even no company. No, a company is for never. 60, a company is like with my level of clout. I mean, which is cool. A company wouldn't just give someone like me sixty thousand without some hard strings attached. Like that's yeah. a lot of money, bro. There's 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 an after game after that month too, and I just you know but how they worded the their. Uh, their thing to me it's just like you got to know what you're getting into so did they you know? use that like mm -hmm. super vague terminology where it's like oh yeah you know like after the fact you got to promote this that and the other thing it, it was like, yeah it was vague terminology but not to that degree they just oh, said um a continuous relationship oh yeah that's oh, so what they, they kept on saying it yeah, yeah. They probably wanted Re continuous name. relationship is definitely a key term used yeah in yeah the but they lot. used it in like a, a his his health of slytherin way and i'm just like <laughs> oh so you yeah. don't fuck with slytherin gotcha okay so i am on this hufflepuff Okay. I, I am House of Slytherin. Okay. No matter, I wanted to be Gryffindor, bro, but I got the exact opposite. I ain't a good nigga. That's just a fact. Hufflepuff hey, got all what? the bad bitches, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, Hufflepuff's for niggas that eat wood chips. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my god. Oh my god. So, um, the last thing I wanna I wanted to talk about, uh, Afro, have you seen um My Hero, the first episode? Nope, not yet. Oh yeah, I mean, I just finished live reacting to that, so I'll probably upload that later. So. It's I mean, it was re it was a recap episode though, yeah, so. It's so yeah. It's not even, it's not even there wasn't really any plot points or anything. And I re I recorded it with my buddy Casey, and um, he's one of the other other guys I'm in this acting group with or whatever, who's a really good fucking voice actor. Holy shit. Um, he uh he was talking about honestly this this was a waste of an episode. We didn't need to you know live react to it. And I was just yeah. Like, I mean, oh, I, you know, I I live reacted to it just because I know it'll get views, but like, and it, I I was gonna watch it anyway, but um. But you're Sometimes caught up to that, to, to though, Afro, right? You watched the first two seasons? Yeah, I caught up. I'm, I'm in the manga. Yeah. Like, I'm deep. I'm caught up in the manga, too. Oh, God, you're one of those shit. people. I don't I don't be reading the manga like that. I only I only read it just because, like, someone spoiled me on something huge that's happening in this season, it oh, looks gosh, like. Oh, gosh, I hate when people do that shit. Yeah, if that's why I read Attack on what, Titan as well, too. If it's what I think it is. It is, what it, it is what you think it is. Yeah, it somebody, is somebody spoiled me <laughs> on that, too. So. Okay, well, don't get into any more details. I, I don't know what but you're this talking is about. But so. this is why I don't fuck with anime niggas. Like, I'm bro, reading one I'm manga right now, and that's Tokyo Ghoul Re, and I'm going to keep it at just that. So. Yo, Tokyo Ghoul is so fucking confused. I'm caught up, bro, but I don't even understand Kaneki. Yeah, I was just talking to Jay about this before we started streaming. How like if you don't like basically if you're in order for you to enjoy the anime, you have to just you have to. I've just come to terms that you have to read the manga. Like if you just you try do, to follow, you do. If you had to just follow from the anime, it's just a, it's a clusterfuck. There's no point. So. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's the, the moment that I when Re was coming out and I was like Root A is not canon, so I was just like I I I read and I bought and read through all the first fourteen volumes of the original and I bought the first well, volume of Re here, uh, today. About Rude. Root A is canon, but in its own. Well, life. okay, no. Here's the thing. Novel. Well, uh, Root A is canon to the anime, not the manga. Like the the storyline, it's like an alternate route. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, but it, I, after read the, reading the manga, like a lot of the stuff from the story is in Root A, but just like it's just like in a it, different it's order. Cool. Like it's weird. Yeah. Like. Like yeah. one major like death, which I don't want to say people who are watching whatever. Like yeah, the death that's why I was telling people, day. which I guess in my next video I have to elaborate because I was almost like like because I guess I'm like I don't know if this will be important to read because like from like I haven't read the manga. I'm like all of the major fights and major interactions except for like a couple, and then yeah, there's there's like a few things, but there's like I would say like 75 percent of the most important stuff in the manga was actually in the the Root A anime. It was just told in a different way, but all those main points were still covered. It's kind of like Full Metal Alchemist versus Full Metal. Alchemist Brotherhood, like for the first half, nah, I, I think. I would even that, say it's like that. I would even say, it's, it's too. Well, different. the reason like, why I say that is because Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood both started out in the same place, but then towards like halfway, they started to deviate in different paths. But it still kind of like came to the same conclusion, just in different ways. Like that's how I was. I was like phrasing it. Like, um, but Root A, I feel like, is more accurate to the to the original than Brotherhood and the original Full Metal Alchemist, though. But that's the closest comparison I can think of. So I get you. It, it, it's. I don't know. Like, they're literally taking episodes, like manga chapters, out, and 
I can't. Wa I don't want to watch the anime because that's just so triggering. Like that'll piss me off. Like I yeah. can imagine watching Naruto and they took manga chapters out. Like oh my nah, goodness, nah. dude. Like yeah, so that's why like I was reading up all the manga so I could just enjoy the anime without having to read anything. But then after we watched the episode, I'm like. I gotta read the manga alongside the show just to enjoy it. Like, basically, the show is just to see some of the best moments animated. Because, oh, by the way, so there's another thing, too. So, okay, like, My Hero Academia, Tokyo Ghoul, these are good shows. So, people need to stop telling me, watch Black Clover, watch Boruto. Like, the, the, there's better shows out there for you to be watching. Like, people are just, like, settling for just the I, I think, most... I think Black Clover isn't inherently a bad anime. No, it's, it's not so that bad. It as fuck. That yeah, it's just it's just so it. it's just very generic and like I've seen all this stuff before. Yeah, like, like it, it's not exceptional you anyway. Like this, it, it is a conclusion yeah. of its predecessors. Like every every great anime has already done. Yeah, it's, it's a product of all the other shonen. Like it, it has, it's just it's very tropey. Like the animation is is decent, but it's it, like it's not Boruto levels, but it's not like amazing or anything. Like some anime, Boruto if like this, is, is not a is not a shonen, bro. That's a slice of life. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but oh my god, did you, I, did, did you see any? Of these, I tweeted out some of these pictures that people were adding me with, like uh, episode uh, 40, 51 of Boruto versus. Yeah, here you go. Episode forty nine of uh, Naruto versus episode forty nine of Boruto, and the episode forty nine of Naruto, it's Rock Lee versus Gara, and then episode forty nine of Boruto, it's like two random ass girls whose names I don't even know in fucking cat and penguin suits and shit, or like. Actually, we we made that comparison like back in like episode 20 because they were in the zabuza arc and that was the first time we yeah hold on i'm gonna post these in the discord uh, chat so you can see what i'm talking about or like this one episode 33 comparisons like i think i think i see what you're talking about like with the something in the cat suit or something oh that one i didn't see that one damn yeah that shit is uh that just gets I mean, worse and worse but boruto is not boruto is not uh naruto is like uh like that's not boruto is a mistake it should be yeah, boruto is not naruto's sequel it's, Sasuke, uh, Sasuke, Black Clover uh, is the Kitty. Naruto sequel. Like, yeah, pretty much. That's that's what's really going on because there's no way you can watch uh, Boruto and go, this is the same context, this is the same show. Like it's just not. It doesn't even. You can't even fix your face to say something like that. So you know. <laughs> okay, well let's start to wrap this up, guys, because I was supposed to eat dinner like 30 minutes ago. This went way longer than it was supposed to. So is there anything that you wanted to say, Jay? Before, because I pretty much I think this was a long enough and then, conversation. And then, uh, <laughs> Sub subscribe to just jay sama as soon as i get to 3k <laughs> i'm bringing canon culture season two and we're gonna have tons of merch and afro sinju is gonna be on on an episode one of these days he's gonna teach us how to uh how to how to vlog properly <laughs> make so. sure you sub to just jay sama at uh youtube.com slash afro sinju xl tv there, yep, there you go yep. oh afro are you going to anime expo this year because i'm going again are you going to anime expo yeah i'm going it's like um i don't are, are you is uh is are you being like uh so what you need to probably do, like, are you, is, like, Bandai bringing you or whatever, or are you just going to go on your own or what? I always go for Bandai. Cause oh, okay. Because I, I was going to say that, like, in the event that you, they, that you, because well, I thought, like, the, you, you had to, like, pay to go last year or something. I think I remember you telling me, like, you and Rhyme had to, like, pay for a ticket or something, right? I think so, yeah. Because, oh, yeah, man. well, I was going to say what you should just do, what I'm doing that I did last year that I was telling you about when we were there was, like, I just put my YouTube channel link on a like a press application, and then they just gave me a press pass. Oh, and oh yeah, like... this year I'm probably gonna get my fucking um, network to just okay, give me a pass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have to pay. I remember I put the, the code in, and that's why. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Mm -hmm. All right. No, well, I don't. I don't, don't want to I mean, go. We'll see. I, I I would go, but I don't have enough clout or enough money to go. So you niggas go. I don't know. You it, you it never, like as you always tell me, Jay. Close mouth, don't get fed. You could try. You could link your channel and say you're a podcast or a blog or whatever, and because like. Honestly, like when I went in line to get my press pass, free for that, but not. No, because Jay, when I went in line to get my press pass, there was like three other people in there, and when I went in the press lounge, there were some like high school ass kids with their random website that nobody's ever seen. So there, people were getting press passes on borderline nothing. So I honestly think just no one else is even applying, like no one is trying, like. Cause I remember thinking that I was like in the wrong line and then they walked me up to the line. I was like, okay, it wasn't even a line. Like they had all these ropes all strung up for a line, but it was just like one guy is just like, oh, finally someone showed up to get a pass. Like, so they're clearly not like, oh, we don't have enough to give out because like barely anybody even applies for one. So That's I feel like, okay. I feel like well, you could probably, get one too. I'll probably apply for it today and see what happens. So yeah, I'll take a look. All right. Watch, we good. We done. We wrapping up. What's, hey man, I'm good. I'm good. Afro, you got anything yeah, to say before we head out? Anything for the call? Ah, that's about. But you know. Okay. Thank you for having um, me, it was pretty fun and. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Uh, it'll probably be back on time, hopefully, um, Friday. Maybe not five. Probably like six o'clock.
Alright guys, well that's the end of this stream. You don't gotta go home, but you gotta get the fuck out of here. Go watch some hentai or something. Hmm.